WFRV TV Local 5, your local election headquarters. This is Newsmaker Sunday with your host, Tom Zalaski. Good morning. Welcome to Newsmaker Sunday. I'm Tom Zalaski. Today we have the pleasure of being joined by Congressman Mike Gallagher. And Mike, thank you for joining us this morning. Much appreciated. Frequent guest on this program. Thanks for having me. Forgive my casual attire that I'm wearing this morning, but you always are, are much uh, better dressed. Than I, I think I'd rather be in your position no. <laughs> with a comfortable look. Um, government shutdown looming February 15th, five days from now. Do you think we're going to reach a deal? Or do we have an impasse? It's hard for me to see how we get in agreement um, for a variety of reasons. One, I, I think we have to be honest that the 2020 presidential election cycle is, it's the black hole that's, that's sucking everything into its gravitational vortex, right? And so neither side has an incentive to compromise, and certainly Speaker Pelosi doesn't want to give Trump anything resembling a victory, which is unfortunate, because I think this is a relatively easy problem to solve. I mean, it's a small problem compared to the really big problems we have, and I do think What's the answer? So I should think, start from the framework the White House put out, $5.7 billion. There's been a lot of misinformation around that. We're not talking about a 30-foot high concrete wall from coast to coast. This is a specific tailored proposal that includes 234 miles of additional physical barrier in the form of slats that the CBP actually likes you can see through. Critically, more resources for about 750 more CBP agents because you need more personnel. Enhanced next generation standoff scanning technology at the ports of entry, which is where most of the drugs are coming okay. through. And then more resources to our immigration courts because the real crisis we have right now starts in Central America in countries like El Salvador, Nicaragua, Guatemala. And you have people fleeing, showing up to our ports of entry claiming asylum. They get a court date that could be two years in the future, and in some cases seven years in the future, and then they never uh, they never show back up, which shouldn't surprise us. So it, it requires a multi-faceted uh, um, approach, and I think the framework is actually a good one. But that has to include some form of physical border security. I think we can get that done, and then I think we also need to then confront the broader failures of our immigration system, because a lot of people coming here illegal are just overstaying their visas. Mm -hmm. As we speak, though, it appears as though Speaker Pelosi is not going to give President Trump his wall. President Trump has threatened either to shut down the government or call a national emergency. If he called a national emergency, what would that entail? Uh, so I think uh, two questions. One, you can actually make an argument that he has the authority to do it, but there's a separate question of whether it's the right precedent. Now, I'm someone who favors border security. I just made an argument essentially for the White House's proposal. That being said, I do not think they should go down the road of declaring a national emergency. And let me explain why. Uh, one, it sets a precedent whereby future presidents, let's just imagine a president, Elizabeth Warren, or President Bernie Sanders, all the Republicans watching your show just recoiled at that point, <laughs> but that's my point. They could use the same precedent to declare a national emergency, let's say, from climate change and seize private assets and it just continues this trend where we we give the executive branch all of our authority and that's destructive and ultimately that's why I would be against it because it lets Congress off the hook we can't we need to step up and solve this let's fix this and then move on to the bigger problems we face and the final thing I'd say Z is uh, we're, we're, we're doing this from a top-down process right we get Pelosi, Schumer, Trump, and like three other really powerful people in a room, and the rest of us sit back and we await white smoke to emerge from the White House chimney. That's not the way it should work. You gotta go back to the committees. You gotta go bottom up. Bottom up is the only chance you have of getting a lasting compromise, a lasting fix on this issue. Top down does not work well, and that's the lesson we need to learn from this So crisis. your best guess, five days from now, I'm gonna be reporting what? Uh, the president declares a national emergency yes. and gets there's no compromise from Pelosi and then we just spend the next you know two years yelling at each other and everything becomes about the presidential election um, everything shouldn't be about the presidential election in fact the framers and founders of this country invested the overwhelming majority of constitutional power 
in the legislative branch for good reason, because we are most accountable to the people, or we should be. There are serious dangers to adjudicating everything through a presidential election or giving everything to the executive branch, because there's only one person that's elected every four years in the executive branch. And so then we just spend the next two years yelling at each other on social media. And I worry about where that heads. I really think we need to find a way to build a space where Let's say you know you you don't buy my argument I just made for robust border security. Okay, that's fine. But let's do we share the same goal? Do we both want to get 100% operational control of the southern border? Because if you do, all right, now we're we're speaking the same language. We can we can debate how we get there, right? To me, it's obvious that we should you know do do two things. We should we should make it difficult, if not impossible, for people to come here illegally but make it easy and transparent for people that want to come here the right way legally and be part of this American experiment. So, so we just need to create a space where we can have those conversations. So to put some people's minds at ease, you don't see another government shutdown coming. Well, no, I don't see another government shutdown uh, coming. I, I don't think the White House wants to, to do that. And uh, I think they surrendered all their leverage when they just reopened it at the last second, which quite frankly took a lot of us in the House by surprise. Um, but. Uh, I will say the president tried, I was in one meeting with the president, the vice president, five Democrats, five Republicans, and I sensed a genuine desire from the president and from the vice president to get a deal and a genuine outreach to the Democrats were on that table. Now, they did also say they recognized they weren't empowered to negotiate because Pelosi had all the, the cards, but I don't know. There, I think if you put aside the language that we, I mean, the wall itself has become a sort of a, a right, symbol for right, bigger things. I kind of think most people are, are closer than we, we think. And I also have a theory that you could take an, an average random sample of people in northeast Wisconsin, put them in a room or a bar together for 15 minutes, and we could figure this thing out. <laughs> and we will be back more with Congressman Mike Gallagher right after this. Stay with us.